So we have a way to return a path, which means if we go over here, uh, basically now we need a way to get the path and I think get random position, move to position. Okay. So I'm going to leave these two running, but first I'm going to cut this from here and I'm going to say get random position. Let's ignore the random position right now because we're going to do it entirely differently and the move position also well. So we're going to create a path. Uh, we're going to need a path, move path or current path. Okay. On get random position right now, I'm just going to say, I'm going to do the exactly same thing. Grid manager, singleton, get path, transfer dot position, enemy dot position. Okay, that's all we need for right now. And on move to position, we're actually going to be removing things from our current path. So target position is going to be uh, current path current path dot are we doing it okay let's say current path zero dot or position but I think we should be going the opposite way uh, if current path dot count equals zero or if it's null of course then simply return okay so with this we're going to be going from one position to the other but one problem we don't have uh, we need to be checking our actual position so uh, okay take player player okay, 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 okay. we need to be checking how close we are to this position and I think we could probably check the square actually let's try that the back the lock target direction dot square magnitude from that okay okay and of course target direction dot z will be transfer dot position dot z we don't want to be changing uh, no that's not the way to do this. That will be the way to do it. Be target position. Uh, vector target position. Yeah, okay. P1.z equals transfer to position. That's it. That will be the way. Put it here. Okay. And uh, let's delete the rest of the enemies just so that we are sure we're not going to screw this up. Okay, so he just goes up and down. Let's see how we are. Square magnitude is kind of terrible. And then I guess let's do float distance to target vector three dot distance will from transfer to position to current path zero dot wall position if distance to target is less than zero less than zero can happen let's say point one f then current path dot remove at zero Let's see if that's going to have him walk. It doesn't. Okay, it doesn't. Why? Though. Let's see. Transfer to position and to position. The random position. What's this? Yeah. Okay, we don't pass the O. Move to position. 
אוקיי, let's debug. Don't need this anymore, don't need this anymore, don't need this. Oh, we do need this. So, that's our first target position. Okay, minus three. Target transfer position, target direction, target direction. You're moving. Distance to target is seven. If distance to target, then you should not go in there. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work like that. I don't know why he's going back. But let's add. Where's the random position? Okay, let's add the same thing for each item in current path. Debug, draw a item dot wall position debug and um, not debug vector three not up by one one f color dot red and uh, leave that for hundred seconds let's see let's make sure that path will be correct okay the path is correct but you're never I think it never Oh, well, first of all, let's do vector two distance. Could be that. Yeah, it was that. And you can see that it's basically working perfectly. Now, Let's see, let's think. This is the target, okay. First of all, once you are finishing the path, you should be doing something here. Go to next position, go to the next target. So, this um, is the target. Well, for now, let's just tick the player. with the vector 3.0 as direction okay so let's encapsulate this instead of setting a random position get random position let's remove this and on start I guess let's remove this as well move to position and Tick. I don't know why this complains because it's definitely wrong because it does we do assign it here so I don't know why are you complaining if we do assign you and we do evoke you so okay let's make it public then oh I don't know anyway Perfect. Okay, and he just subs. So uh, that's a way to move around. So let's say we want to get a random object, or we want to get a random position uh, around our player. We can go on our pathfinder, and here's the, where the nice thing is going to come into play. We could just create a flow map. What's a flow map is basically nodes around a level that do not nodes around a position that do not have any yeah so basically they do not have any yeah they do have you can walk on them but they're just you just get a map of where you can stand around the player okay so let's try and create that so let's do we just need a list in this case we just need a list so let's do get flow map 
and we need the center and where we start from vector 3 center or origin I guess and I'll say we need also steps so we're going to say steps I'm just going to say like 10 now let's create a return value or a result the result now the only thing well the only problem is that yeah for this we you need to create a pathfinder we don't care for the pathfinder we just do this on the grid manager okay then we need to find our origin first of all origin get node oh then we need a list of nodes for our open set exactly the same as we do with uh, our a star and we kind of need to create steps now so to do that we need to to write this inside our node so we'll add public integer step okay for our origin we're going to reset the step and we're always going to be resetting the steps then on our return value mm, we might want to to add our origin but whatever open set we're going to add the origin okay mm, so while our open set dot count is greater than zero then node let's check for the current node we're going to be going we're going to be iterating through our nodes from this and let's set up the step we need to be counting how many steps we've taken so steps will always be from current node dot step uh, let's rename this to step count okay if steps we're going to assume that the current node we're checking is always one step above so it's the next step so if steps is less than step count then for each node we're going to be getting in our get flow map neighbors we don't have this yet but we will write it from a current node and let's see i'm referencing a unit okay and let's create this method then if close set does not contain a node and if this needs to be telling a node that's why it's complaining and this actually needs to be returning a list of nodes that's why it's complaining and if the open set does not contain a node and if our steps is less or equals our step count and then we assign our steps then we say open set dot add the next node now if our steps is greater than our uh, actually we don't need the next threshold we don't have one uh, we're just going to do result dot add our node and that is for the most part is our uh, flow map but inside our while loop we should also there's a while loop over here we should also 
remove from the open set our current node and from the closed set we're going to add our current node so we're not going to check again the nodes we already taken now for flow map neighbors we're going to do a nested loop but first we need a result as well so let's do our nested loop and we need to go from minus one up to one and again from minus one up to one for y now if x is zero and y is zero then continue it's on the same node we're currently checking otherwise let's do integer x will be current node dot x plus x integer our target y will be current node dot y plus y then get node x y and basically we only need to do one thing check if it's walkable or not so if node is walkable result dot add a node and that's it that's our flow map so we can now go on to the let's see we can go now to the AI handler inside get random position for example and do list node uh, flow now flow map from grid manager singleton get flow map from the enemy dot position okay let's say we want to have this step count is uh, in in nodes so we could probably just go even bigger we'll do like 40 and we can just get now a random that range between uh, zero and flow map dot count okay then current get path instead of any position we'll do flow map random wall position and that's it so let's try testing this a little bit more i'll say five seconds for this and once you tick the player once this is done let's say bull has move direction or move or move position if has move position do this oops has move position equals false and also invoke get random position after like four seconds or just two seconds just find another random position but we also need to do has move position equals true here let's put this above them so this should be getting a random position around the player around the player and it should be sending the enemy there so let's test, test it out and voila we have random positioning around our player awesome so that's really on point to be honest we can actually simplify this a lot and oh he's kind of stuck there i think he's stuck because of uh, yeah so for on an AI handler you are taking the player and you are moving to a target position but i think you don't need to 
uh, yeah, so we could split this up so the uh, AI can just move over obstacles because he's already doing pathfinding. You don't need to be validating if you can move onto that position or not. So let's do public void pick AI float delta and we'll do the, exactly the same thing but and let's see vector 3 direction as well let's pass this as well and direction move on position actually why are we passing this when we can just do move on position Or is AI and not is interacting because if you're getting hit, we still want to be compound uh, confined by the level, so that should probably fix all our problems there. Okay, so. As you saw, of course, these are a lot of steps. But let's say I move right now. Even with our camera on. And everywhere I go. Well, of course, now I'm blocked. But the AI can just follow me around. There's not really any significant frame drop. Oh, there is. There is a hiccup. Let's see why. Sequencing. Uh, oops, no timeline. Well, we don't know why, but I'm not sure if it's from the editor or if it's because I'm debugging or, or stuff like that. I think it's the flow map, to be honest. I think it's just way too much. Uh, Goals right now. So CPU usage, player loop. It's still not that much to be honest. Where's the hiccup? Come on. No, I didn't make it. Assuming this is the hiccup, this is a frame drop, uh, script, run, coroutines, delayed calls, get random position, okay, this is down to, what, it's too many calls, yeah, obviously, but, mm, I think no, but, we can just do, so like 40 calls we're doing we also can just uh, do one more thing the simplest way to do this right now would be just add this into a coroutine that would be easy as well get a random position Routine. And just do yield turn null. Okay, so that should work as well uh, without much of a hiccup. But we can also do like 10 positions and we can also be passing an offset. I'm just going to, to add it to one. So what is the offset? We can say get flow map neighbors. We're not going to be looking on every node.
but instead we're going to be adding on every node let's see x by offset So we can say just look on every 10 nodes because we have a very small uh, pathfinding unit, uh, very small nodes. We don't really need to be checking on every node either. So on our pathfinder, uh, not our pathfinder, on our AI handler, let's try get 10 nodes. Assumingly that will be 10 steps, but make it every five every five nodes so that should also make it much faster way to work with okay no hiccups and of course because we are not checking if we got hit he was still able to just scroll around now I think on our target direction we are doing. Uh, no, it should be moving faster. Let's see how we are on time. How much? Okay, we still have a couple of minutes. So let's try on our AI handler while we move into position. And then target direction player position one target direction we normalize the direction and we pass the direction then when taking the player we have a horizontal speed vertical speed okay it's taking and then we have our target position move on position Yeah, no, that, that seems fine. Let's just change his. Uh... Hmm. Horizontal speed. Let's just change this to 0 0.8 or 2.6. Yeah, that's correct. So let's stress, uh, stress test this. And then, so that's right, okay. And then call it a day for this. I'm going to close this too, and I'm going to enable my camera manager as well. Yeah, so I'll call it good enough. Like this is really no, doesn't have any effect on performance or any heat. I call these guys just try and find a position around you, which is super cool. And we can simplify the positioning as well, or the pathfinding. The other thing that we can do is because we know it's where everyone is, we can just ignore nodes. So there's never a chance they will sit onto the same node as somebody else. So this is pretty cool. Awesome. So let's finish this part over here and then we are free to just continue on with the delegates and all this cool stuff we want to do. Of course, we should be stopping them when they're moving ah, this is pretty cool you can see that it's starting to be fleshed out in a really nice way so that's it for this part as always like subscribe keep patreon so we can make a little bit more of this stuff okay i'll see you next time